I want to start this recording right now. I should have started a little bit ago, but I just felt the Holy Spirit say this. So what I just prophesied, I'm going to re reemphasize again. Starting 2029, 2030, we're going to see the uh, a four or five year grace period from right now, a grace period where it will be difficult times in the world, but enough grace that God says you'll be able to get yourself together, get your family in order, come up with a game plan. But because when it starts 2029, 2030, you're going to see an antichrist agenda that's going to start persecuting Christians, trying to eliminate Christians, and you're going to start seeing Christians be removed, if you know what I mean, physically off this earth, and they're going to start trying to kill Christians, and Christians will be known as terrorists. Christians will start being called bigots. They'll start being called a, a, a threat to national security. They are going to start targeting us. Anyone who is a true believer of the gospel, the ones who believe all parts of the Bible, not just little fake sugar, candy, sweet scriptures, all of the ones, the ones that confront sinful lifestyles and all these different things. I'll tell you this much. There's a couple of people that have been coming to our church with spirit of antichrist. If you have a spirit of antichrist, meaning that you don't agree with what the scripture says, you don't believe it's real, please do not come back to this church. And I'm warning this to all of you guys. And for you that know people who come to the church, tell them, please just don't come back here no more. Because if you continue to come to our church with spirit of antichrist, I'm calling you out because this, I can't allow this to enter into our church. The, the spirit of the Antichrist is moving around in the world. It's been here since the foundation of the earth, but I cannot afford to see the spirit of Antichrist inside the church. Why? Because people with spirit of Antichrist is not something you just go and get deliverance from, right? Why? Because you know what you're doing. I'm going to tell you this right now. People who have spirit of Antichrist, you know what you're doing. You know the scriptures, you know God is real, but you don't want to accept it. You want to come against it. So I'm telling you this right now for anyone who's watching this, anyone that's in our church, anyone who knows someone in our church. If you have spirit of antichrist, do if you either two things are going to happen. Either you you're going to get set free and you're going to change and believe the gospel or you need to get out of here. Because if you do not go out, if you do not get out of here, I'm going to call you out. I'm going to call you out because one thing is to struggle with alcohol, anger, smoking, sex, wrong relationships. Some of us battle with that stuff and it takes some time. But when you have something in you to say, I, I don't like the Bible, I don't like scripture, I don't like Jesus, I don't like the truth and I want to come against it. We have problems. You cannot stay in our church. You cannot remain in our church. Either you change, or either you get out, or I'm going to make that demon get out, or you and your demon get out. Because you can't, you, I mean, we watched that movie about it. So we know that right now we're in the stages of rumors of war. We're going to enter into actual war. And after that, it's going to start the persecution and the arrest and the killing of Christians throughout the world. It won't be, this won't be just an Easter thing anymore. It is going to start happening now. We see it right now, people rioting. You see people right now speaking that they want Israel dead. And guess and guess what? Many people will uh, jump on board and agree with this. The only ones who will be left defending Israel will be Christians. So Christians will be looked at as the enemy. We will be the enemy. And it says that many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. False prophets. Why? Because people are constantly after prophecies, after words of knowledge. i would noticed that people will flock to the church who has prophecy and words of knowledge. I have met people say, oh, I'm looking for a church that operates in the prophetic. How about you look for a church that preaches the true word of God? And how many times people said, oh, finally, I found a church that 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 words of knowledge and prophecy. What? Praise God that that happens, but you need to be after a true Bible-believing church. Oh, I finally found a church that does deliverance. What? My question is, why do you got so many demons? <laughs> you were looking for churches who do deliverance? Why don't you find the deliverer? Oh, come on, somebody. <laughs> oh, I've been looking for a church that casts out demons. They're doing deliverance. Praise God. But why haven't you found the deliverer who does the deliverance? He would have set you free at home. I got set free at home before. I never had a church service where somebody laid hands on me and I was like, Ugh. praise God that our church does it. But 
hey, the, the, the spirit of God will meet you wherever you want him to meet. You could be in your closet and say, Lord, Jesus set me free and he'll set you free right there. And then I know he set me free before. <laughs> Let's keep going. And I'm going to talk for like 15 more minutes. I used to question deliverance church when I saw the same person every Sunday get delivered. If you're getting delivered every single Sunday, and I know there's people in our church, you still got a demon. You're scared. You're scared to manifest again because of what I said, that you better not be manifesting every Sunday. Instead of hiding your demon so you're not one of the ones who keeps manifesting, how about you manifest one last time and get fully free? Because, man, y'all think I don't be knowing or I don't be seeing. Like last Sunday, there was three people in our church sitting in there with a demon inside of them. But you wanted to play dumb and say, I'm not answering an altar call and I'm not manifesting. And I'm not going to allow myself to manifest because I don't want no one looking at me like, why are you still manifesting every Sunday? That's that's not what I'm trying to get at. And what I'm saying is get manifest, get delivered, get set free once and for all and stay free. Amen. It says sin will be rampant everywhere and the love of many will be will grow cold. So I mean, sin is going to be completely out of control. It's out of control right now. It's so out of control right now. The hearts of many will grow cold, but the one who endures till the end shall be saved. Did it say the one who endures until the rapture will be saved? No, it's the one until the end, the end, the end of it all. And it says, and the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world. So all the nations will hear it. And then the end will come. So what is that telling you? Jesus the gospel doesn't have to be preached everywhere for tribulation to start. And I think that was a big misconception. A lot of us thought that we think the gospel's got to get preached everywhere and then tribulation can start. No, it doesn't. It says tribulation. It says all the gospel's got to be preached. And then the end, the end of the end where Jesus returns at the end, because how do we know it's talking about the second coming, the whole return, because he started off the verse saying, <laughs> When will we know of your second coming and the end of this world? So the end of the world and his second coming is put together. There is no return of Jesus at the beginning of tribulation. It is at the end. And that's why he says those who endure till the end. Come on, man. Those what a revelation. Those who endure till the end shall be saved. And he says, and at the end is where Jesus returned. And when their gospel is preached throughout the whole world, then the end will come. So when there's this confusion about the return of Jesus and rapture and all this different stuff, no, it's all there because Christ is so merciful and kind. He'll still let the gospel be preached to you in the midst of tribulation. And guess what? Only radical ones will know about that. Pastor Crystal just sent me a verse, Romans 1, 19 to 20. It says this, they know the truth about God because he has made it obvious to them. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky through everything God made. They can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power, his divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. Woo! She just sent me a fire one. So anyone that says, oh, I, I, I didn't know because I didn't go to a deliverance church. I didn't know because I didn't find the scripture saying, well, if you didn't know the skies in the, in the world tells you, you ever wonder people say, oh, what about in, in remote islands and in the Amazons when nobody can get to there? How How is Jesus going to return if the gospel, the world it declares his majesty? Come on, man. He robo cool shit a bit kid. He's saying his, his the heavens declare, the creation declares his majesty. So when you say there is no God, you're looking up at the heavens and the skies and the trees and the birds and the animals and say nobody made this. So right there alone is a it is anti Christ. You don't even need to know the Bible. Just by looking at creation and saying, I choose not to believe nobody made this is anti Christ alone. I met somebody the other day said, well, I'm a Christian and I'm an evolutionist. I said, you can't, you can't. Like, well, why can't you? That means you don't believe in a creator. You think that things just created itself. And she was like, well, no, well, I still think God, God, I said, how was God involved in evolution? Did Jesus come from a monkey? Was he, does he come from a, 
I said, because if you look at the Bible, God made it clear to preserve generations. That's why he he starts off by telling you who came from who, who came from who this person begot this person. So you don't say such and such person begot and came from such and such caveman. And from there, we lost track of who he came from because they evolved. There is no such thing as that. The scripture has made it very clear that none of those things happen. She says, oh, you know, you know, I believe that we came from monkeys. I said, how come the monkeys are still monkeys then? How come they haven't changed? Oh, I don't know. I said, maybe they got rebellious. And and then they were like, no, nah, I don't want to change. I want to stay a monkey so I can keep chilling at the zoo. And then when she saw what I was saying, she felt dumb. It's 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 nonsense that people believe strong delusions. People believe stupid things. I'm telling you, and, and I've had, uh, uh, praise God, man. If you guys, if you ever have doubts about anything, other cults, other religions, other forms of Christianity, just come and ask me. I'll... I'll I'll tell you the truth and I'll give you scripture every single time. We, I had a brother after the movie theater start asking me questions about something they saw in another church. I said, I got scriptures for you all day. I said, if whoever came to you and told you this, I have ammunition for you, yo. I'll give you a magazine fully loaded with scriptures, yo. Because if there's one thing my pastor drilled into my mind, the sense I got saved when I was 18 years old is you better know your Bible. Because if you don't know your Bible, prayer will not stop you from being deceived. Word of God is the only thing that can stop you from getting deceived. Knowledge is the only thing that blocks deception. <clears throat> so it's 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 knowledge. Knowledge. You can only become deceived by your lack of knowledge, which comes from ignorance. You need to study your word. I can feel it in my spirit. There are some of you on here. You do not study your Bible. You pray, you talk about God, but you don't study your Bible. And then not only study your Bible, apply it. Make it your mission to say, I'm going to live this thing out. Man, I don't want to talk too much because I don't want to enter into a Bible study tonight. We got to pray and we're going to pray hard. Amen. We're going to pray because, like I said, this hurricane is coming, right? This hurricane is coming. Like I said, I prophesied about this four months ago already. If you don't believe me, go on the YouTube. You can see that I You're said it specifically. I, I said it specifically that this thing is coming and it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to be coming here. And guys, there's more to come. I'm telling you guys, there is more to come. There's more destruction coming. There's more chaos coming. Those sleeper cells that came inside the country and have invaded and come through the border that are in here at they're about to be activated they're about to be activated and you're going to start seeing people start really trying to imp imp impl imp implicate these plans of terrorism on our soil you're going to see minor you're going to see minor ones start popping up here soon this is why i say you better be in a place to be able to defend your family Always have food, have water stocked up. I've, I've been saying this for the longest, and I've been I've been saying this for over three years. You you better have this because right now these things are just shadows of things to come. Because when this passes, people are going to be like, "Oh, well, see, we still got food, we still got water." You are a scoffer of prophecy. Bible says, "Do not be a scoffer," meaning you look at it and say, "Huh, it didn't happen." Huh, Pastor Jamie was wrong. Huh, it wasn't as bad as what they said. You are a scoffer. And when you're a scoffer, you're scoffing at God. You ain't scoffing at me. <laughs> I don't get money from Walmart or Publix or, or or gas stations for you buying supplies. I'm telling you because I care about you and I love you enough to tell you that these are the things that are about to start taking place. And, and, and I know there's prophetic people that are in our church, you know, and just because you're prophetic don't mean you're a prophet, by the way. But I know there's people in our church that you're prophetic and you've been getting dreams about this for years. You've been seeing things for years. And I feel the spirit of the Lord as I'm saying this. It's been you. You guys have been dreaming years of, of chaos, even dreams where you're like, did I get left behind? How come I didn't leave in the rapture? Well, it's because God was showing you that that rapture doesn't take place the way you think. That's not the biblical way it follows. That's why some of you think. That when you dream these things that sometimes they may be of the devil. No, it's God showing you because I was talking about this with another pastor friend of mine. Sometimes some dreams from God, you will wake up terrified because it's the fear of God is letting you really know the, the level of things. Read Isaiah, read Ezekiel, and you'll see how many times they got dreams from God and visions from God. And they woke up trembling, shaking, terrified. So I'm telling you, these are the next, we have four to five more years to, to really prep and the physical gatherings of Unity Church has been about two years, two years and some change. We're already about we're about almost 70 people. So in another two more years. We should be more than 140 people.
if you think about it, the church is growing really fast. Our church is growing really quick. I've and I and I'll tell you all the years I've been in Lord, I've never seen a church from scratch grow that fast. And all the glory goes to Jesus, but also kudos to you guys. You guys are sharing the gospel with everyone you know. If you don't go and preach the gospel, that is the great commission. Go out and make disciples. So if you guys are supposed to be filling this place up, and there's many of you here, you you have a lot of jewels on your crown because you can look around the church and say, I brought this person here, obviously through the help of the Holy Spirit, but you preach to them. If there's 70 of us, if we all invited one person to come to church on Sunday, we would have 140 people by next Sunday. Amen, Brother Joshua. If I posted videos of, of me giving word of knowledge and people confirming it's true or casting out demons, the church would grow like crazy. I will never. When I say never, never. And if I see anyone recording anyone when they're getting delivered or manifesting, I'm going to smack that phone out of your hand because we are going to cover people's nakedness at this church. We're not here to use somebody's vulnerable moment for your own glory. We're not using someone's vulnerable moment to make yourself be known. It ain't you that's casting anything out. It's the Holy Spirit that's casting stuff. So <laughs> Christine said, just FYI, don't. Yeah, Christine records stuff. So now she, I mean, she's sure she knows, but we don't, we don't, we don't want to do that. I, I don't need, like, I, I just, I see that on YouTube and it just disgusts me and it angers me. That's why you'll see people blow up and become famous because then people are going to come to our church for deliverance. I'm not, I'm, I don't want you coming to our church for deliverance. I want you coming to our church for discipleship. Because if you were getting discipled, you wouldn't be looking for a church. For deliverance. And praise God that we get delivered. Praise God we get set free. But you got to stay free. You got to stay free. You got to stay free. The enemy shouldn't be doing that. And that's why people keep having these deliverance events and prophetic events, all this stuff. Just to make money. Make money off this stuff. I, guys, if I sat there and did that, I could sit there and probably quit my job and do that. That's disgusting. And that's why Paul said, that's why I don't even do that. I'll never do it. I'll never, never do it. <laughs> Seen a pastor call someone pastor daddy. Yeah, there's some people call their pop prophet or their pastor. They call, go around them calling them papa. There's only one daddy. It's our father in heaven. Yes, biblically. Pastors are spiritual parents, spiritual fathers, to you know, stuff like that. But don't call me daddy. <laughs> I, uh, 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 no, 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 especially not no grown man calling me daddy. Heck no. That's weird. That's cultish. That is cultish cult. Anyone that's going calling their pastor papa and daddy or calling their prophet papa or no, Freddie, poppy, neither. That is cultish and demonic, and we ain't doing that over here. No, 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 no. No. I'm bowing down to Apostle Catherine. There's so much false people out there, man. Get off YouTube, man. That's why I keep telling these people. Man, get off YouTube. Stop getting pastored by YouTube people. Y'all got a pastor. You don't need to be going on there listening to that stuff. The only people that I recommend is the ones that I send you. There's, I have a very small, tight list, and I even tell you, well, even with them, take it with a grain of salt. Take what's good, whatever is not good, throw it out. Amen? Because there's, like I said, there's a lot of false stuff going out there. And we're going to we're gonna pray, so I'm going to cut the recording now. Amen.